Hello financial investors and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be doing our stock market weekly recap for the 17th through the 21st of August 2020. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the four main indexes for this past week. What were their performance? Were they positive or negative for the week? Which was our winner? Which was our loser? Then we're going to go ahead and jump into taking a look at the entire S&P 500 performance for this past week. Taking a look at stocks individually, what stocks were strong, what stocks were weak, what sectors were stronger than others, and moving to the upside. You know, I'm really interested in finding out where you guys are currently investing your capital. Are you invested in stock, healthcare, financials, industrials, REITs? You know, I'd really like to hear from you guys below in the comment section, where are you currently investing your capital? Are you just kind of dollar cost averaging into your total portfolio? That would be interesting to kind of know. And once we take a look at the entire S&P 500, we'll take a look at oil, the dollar, silver, gold bonds, taking a look at the 10 year bond rate and wrapping it up by taking a look at mortgage rates currently. So that is what we're going to be covering in today's video. I like to do these weekly recaps in order to take a look at what is going on in the market, not only as far as news. I didn't post a whole lot this week on my Facebook page. It was my wife's birthday on Thursday, and we had a huge amount going on at our credit union. I work at a financial credit union, and with this whole we had the emergency fund that took place on Thursday and Friday. We had lines going crazy. Our call center got hit. We had issues with our calls coming in. So we had a lot of after hours this week, and I was actually off on Friday in order to enjoy my day with my wife. So it's her birthday on Thursday. So I had a lot going on this week. I didn't post a lot over on social media, but hoping to kind of pick it back up on this following week. But anyways, kind of going back to it all, we're going to go ahead and take a look at jobless jobless claims that came out on Thursday. Regardless of where you see the market here moving, it was actually a little negative as far as, you know, job, unemployment claims. And then we'll take a look at some of the earnings that were that came out this past week and how it had an effect on the Dow Jones here also. So that is what we're going to be covering in today's video. If you are brand new to the channel, definitely subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every time we post a new video, and give this video a thumbs up, make it blue, and let's go ahead and get into the video. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, these are a little bit interesting days because we had a couple earnings coming out on Tuesday and Wednesday that I was looking at. I was looking at Walmart, I was looking at Lowe's, and a few others out here. So I don't know if you guys were looking at anything specific on Monday, but my main focus this week was on Tuesday and Wednesday. We had Walmart, Home Depot, we had Kohl's, we had Lowe's, we had Target, Nvidia. We had a good amount of companies kind of posting out some earnings. They're not really big and gigantic tech companies, but they're just kind of interesting to kind of find out where's retail, where, you know, these big conglomerate retail businesses kind of going. And they had a little bit of an effect on the Dow Jones versus the S&P 500. Now, if you kind of, if you want to take a look at that, go ahead and pause. Let me know down in the comment section below if you were interested in any of these this week. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, S&P 500 essentially moved positive on the Dow Jones. We can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Dow Jones actually stayed pretty negative. Even with earnings from Walmart, Target, I believe they're both in the Dow Jones along with Apple. Oh, this isn't going to list me the companies down here. It used to have companies down here down below. Okay, kind of moving on. And the NASDAQ this week was definitely our winner as far as positive. This week it is up a whopping 2.65% and 26.07%. And then we have our loser this week of the four indexes. The Russell 2000 was our worst performer being down 1.61%. There's actually a lot of small businesses that are having to cut their staff, reduce hours, and reclose their businesses. Once again, I've seen it quite a bit here locally. It's just, it's pretty tough. It's a lot, it's pretty tough for some of the smaller businesses. You know, I saw a comment on the dividend group on Facebook. I don't know if it, which group it was specifically, but on Tuesday when Walmart announced their earnings that they were doing so well, they were actually blowing past expectations. This individual kind of commented on, you know, I see that Walmart is in a state of euphoria. They're doing really well. How are they saying that the economy, that retail is hurt? And what they're looking at is Walmart is this gigantic business that has this foot 
stuck in the door, you know, they have their foot in the door. It's at all these communities and no one's shopping at the smaller mom and pop stores, the small businesses, because they were forced to close down because they couldn't hire the staff. They don't have that money available to just kind of push through and judge through it. So Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're being able to stay active. They're getting the most of the traffic coming in because of that. They have the availability to keep funding regardless of the illness. And all these small mid cap businesses are going to be ended up getting either closed or just kind of getting picked up by these larger businesses during this this uh, stage that we're currently in. So I think small mid cap businesses going forward, I think we're going to continue to see them kind of get hit back and forth quite hard. So there we are. NASDAQ was our winner. Russell 2000 was our loser. Dow Jones was our flat one. Now, as far as unemployment goes on Thursday, I was actually a bit surprised to see that the indexes here on Thursday were actually moving to the upside on a few of them. Now, the job numbers came out. Unemployment came out and it was actually back above that $1 million mark, $1 million, uh, $1 million unemployment claims on Thursday, so this past week. And we can see that there's, uh, you know, it's struggling for the U.S. job market. There's lots of jobs that are just gone and may or may not return in the future. And then we also saw that recently, as of the 1st of August, you know, the 31st of July, 1st of August, that individuals are no longer gonna be getting that extra $600 in weekly unemployment. It is. It was cut down to $400. That's still really good. You know, that's $1,600 every month on top of their unemployment versus the, what, $2,400. So $1,600 versus $2,400. You know, you're getting so much extra income. Hopefully that was going towards something because, you know, if you got unemployment, you would make it work. You know, people would make it work. You'd make it work somehow with unemployment. But this was just an additional $2,400, an additional $1,600. So hopefully it was going towards paying down loans that would hurt you, paying down, you know, paying rent into the future. So, uh, you know, interesting. Also, you know, like I said, on Thursday and Friday, our credit union was flooded. We actually made up nearly, I believe, 30 to 40 percent of the total emergency funding requests that went through Oregon. We beat out the northern Portland, Oregon area and actually processed a high volume of these uh, $500 emergency funding for these individuals that met the certain criteria. So it's pretty crazy. We ran out of funding on midday on Friday. So anybody that was trying to come in late and, you know, embarrassed about coming in, they weren't able to get that, which is unfortunate. But a lot of people really do need that extra cash. And so kind of jumping back over here, we've covered all the indexes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one week performance for the stock market. Now, right off the bat, what company is out there bright and green and shooting up to the skies? We have Apple. Apple is at $497.48 per share. That is crazy. Not too long ago, maybe a year ago, possibly. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this up real quick. Actually, I can do it over here on the Russell. The Russell here, well, I'll flip it to Apple, but just let's take a look at one year ago. One year ago, less than a year ago, right here, back in, I guess, one year ago. So if we look at 52 week low, the 52 week low is at $201. And it wasn't too long before that where Apple was trading about around 160, 170. So this is all within a year. It has 100, you know, 2 x It's 2x itself, and it may be on track to um, 3x itself. So it's pretty crazy the performance of Apple. So if you haven't bought Apple, you know, are you considering buying Apple now? And we can also see the other FANG stocks here. Facebook up 2.21%. Apple, we already discussed, 8.23%. Amazon, 434 We have Netflix up at the top, right? Or not Netflix, NVIDIA up 968 We have also Netflix over here, 2%. And we have Google up 4.71%. Followed by Microsoft, the FANGUM 
of 1.97. So FANG stocks holding the market. They're the strongest stocks out there in the market right now. And there's just a lot of capital getting pushed into maybe VU, which tracks the S&P 500. And when you're buying VU, you're buying 25, nearly 30% of these FANG stocks now. And then we also see, you know, besides the FANG stocks, what other areas would have stood out? We have software, technology applications here that stood out, CRM, Salesforce. We also have healthcare, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Merck, Eli Lilly, all doing really well there. We have a couple financials, for, uh, Visa, I was going to say Verizon, uh, Visa and MasterCard up really nice along with PayPal. Those are the three main businesses that I know that accept payments, you know, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, those are some big businesses. If you're trying to get into the credit card services, it would be who of you to own all three of them. That way you're pretty diversified. Uh, between the three, I see Target. They must have had some good earnings. I believe they had earnings on, yep, on Wednesday. So based on the 10, uh, 12 0.53% pop here, I believe that they must have run really well with their earnings this week. Over in the REITs, not a whole lot. You know, we saw one right there, Equ Equinox. I can't say the word. I said Equinox. Equinix looks like it's up 2.65%. But besides that, not a whole lot. Po uh, you know, the bond portion there is positive. Kind of interesting. So I would still can say, I would still say the FANG stocks are leading the charge on the market moving higher. And we also see some healthcare, you know, kind of pop it in there. Some credit services also pop it in there. But aside of that, the rest of the market's essentially red and dead. <laughs> okay, so moving over to oil. Oil is down 0.59% here, just kind of slowly trending to the downside. The dollar this week looks like it actually went lower just slightly. It started the week at 93. Okay, it went higher just a tad. Started the week around 93.08, ended the week at 93.20, so dollar is getting just slightly stronger, but not enough to really be spectacular. We have silver recovering slightly from, I believe last week they tumbled quite a bit, so this week they're up 1.22%, nothing from where they lost. Gold here retracting just a little bit, down 0.26%. We have the Vanguard bonds up 0.38% this past week, and I believe... The 10-year rate, I would have to go back and look at the pat last week's video. I believe it was at 0.72, but I will I will go back and look. I believe the prior prior week it was at 0 .5, uh, 0.54, and then it shot up by 0.2. So I believe it was somewhere around 0 0.72, 0 0.74. So it go it did go down about 10 basis points to 0.64%. And then as far as our 30-year mortgage rates, it fell 10 basis points to now 3.14%. So if you're out there trying to refinance your homes or just buy a new home, now is still a great time to do it. You know, regardless of where it's at, you know, if you think mortgage rates are going to go lower, it's still fine to buy right now. Get into a home that you want. Lock in a, lock in a rate now. And in six months to a year, go ahead and refinance it. If you're able to drop down a point, great. If you're not, say interest rates rise, well, you locked in at a 3% rate. And if it raised, you know, that's too, you, great. You locked in low, but if it lowers, refinance it, pay, you know, because you're going to be there long term, hopefully. And just kind of pay that difference there. So that is it as far as this week's news. Again, we didn't post anything else this week. It was a pretty busy week at work and at home with everything kind of going on. Uh, liquidating accounts, I already liquidated the accounts. I actually got the cash in my my bank account. And I'm, I'm going to do a video this upcoming Wednesday on funding a Fidelity account and also doing a transfer from M1 Finance or Merrill Edge. One of the two, I have to see which one I'm transferring from first over into Fidelity. So that is going to be it for today's video. I thank you all for tuning in. If you have not yet subscribed, definitely go down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified every time we post a new video, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday generally. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what sector you are currently buying stocks in. Are you buying the bank stocks? Are you buying healthcare, finance? I'd really appreciate 
you, let me know down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye.